This is Temporary Pacing 101, Setup and Modes. If you ever step into a pediatric cardiac intensive care unit, you will see temporary pacer boxes everywhere. So let's talk about them. The incidence of arrhythmias after surgery for congenital heart disease is high, so the placement of temporary pacing wires is common, almost standard of care for most operations. Most often, pacer wires are placed on the outside of the heart on the atria and the ventricle, and then tunneled to exit the thorax just under the sternum. These are called epicardial wires to differentiate them from transvenous or transcutaneous pacing. By convention, the atrial wires exit on the patient's right and the ventricular wires on the patient's left. If your patient has dextrocardia, the surgeon will usually cross the wires internally so the atrial wires still exit the right. But ask, just to be sure. The pacemaker wires don't have to be hooked up. They may be just dangling there. But if they are hooked up, there is more than one type of temporary pacemaker on the market. I'll be showing this one. The same principles apply. There are two atrial wires and two ventricular wires, essentially a negative and positive terminal, which is necessary for electricity to conduct. These are then connected by cables to the pacemaker box. Atrial wires on the left of the box when it is facing you. Ventricular wires on the right of the box. So if the box is at the end of the bed facing out, the cables won't cross. So let's talk about the knobs. Remembering your pacemaker may be different, but should have the same functionality. At the top, we have rate. This is the slowest the pacemaker will pace your patient. And if they have no electrical activity at all, this is what the pacemaker will pace at. When you are setting a rate, you are really telling the pacemaker how long to listen for an electrical signal from the heart before it paces. Next up is the controls for the wires. Atrial on top, ventricular on the bottom. Both the atrial and ventricular wires have two things to set. The sense, which is how sensitive the pacemaker is seeing native heart activity, and the stimulation, which is how much energy the pacemaker is delivering when it paces. These will be covered in other videos. Between the atrial and ventricular controls is the AV delay, which is measured in milliseconds. This knob tells the pacemaker how long after the P wave to wait before pacing the ventricle, and only is used when sensing both the atrium and the ventricle. A couple buttons to note at the bottom half of the box. Holding down the emergency pace button will put the pacemaker in a backup mode at maximum output and no sensing, to be used for sudden failure and a temporary measure while troubleshooting the situation. The unlock button must be pushed before any settings are changed, so the pacemaker can't be changed by accidentally bumping into it, and the pause button, which stops pacing while the button is pushed. You probably shouldn't touch that unless you are a cardiologist or intensivist. So let's talk about modes. There are multiple modes, but the three you are gonna see in the CICU are AAI, VVI, and DDD. First, nomenclature. Each mode consists of three letters. The first is a cardiac chamber being paced. The second is a cardiac chamber being sensed. And the third is what the pacemaker response is to sensing, with I specifically meaning inhibited. Let's go through the modes and this will make sense. AAI. In this mode, the pacemaker is pacing only the atrium, sensing only the atrium, and when it senses native electrical activity, it inhibits itself, so it doesn't do anything. You see only the sense and stem buttons for the A wires are available. So you've set their pacemaker to 60. The pacemaker is going to listen to the atrium at a rate of 60 beats per minute, meaning it is listening for a beat every one second. If it sees a beat within that time, it inhibits itself from pacing and starts the clock over again. If it doesn't see native electrical activity during this time, it will pace the atrium, creating a P wave. Here is a patient being paced AAI at a rate of 140. The white lines on the monitor indicate when the pacemaker is pacing. The pacer spikes are then followed by a P wave. The QRS complex is generated by the patient and the pacemaker doesn't even see the ventricle in this mode. Here is AAI pacing when the AV node isn't working well. In this mode, the pacemaker doesn't know there isn't a QRS complex and the heart isn't actually beating. So this isn't a great mode when your patient is at risk for heart block. And here's a patient set at AAI at 100, but since the native rate is higher than 100, the monitor shows nothing at all. Let's talk about these little lights on the side. The sensing light flashes when the pacemaker sees native cardiac electrical activity and inhibits itself. The light next to stem flashes when the pacemaker paces. This can be helpful when trying to troubleshoot pacemaker problems. Now for VVI. This mode paces the ventricle, senses the ventricle, and inhibits itself when it sees the patient-generated QRS. This pacer is set at 100, meaning it is listening for a QRS complex every 0.6 seconds. If it sees a QRS, it inhibits itself and starts the timer over again. If 0.6 seconds pass with no QRS, it paces. In this mode, the pacemaker doesn't see the atrium, so there'll be no atrial ventricular synchrony, which may not be well tolerated by a sick heart.
Here's a patient being paced VVI at a rate of 100. Notice that there are no P waves before the QRSs. The pacemaker doesn't care about what the atrium is doing in VVI. And also see that the QRS is wide. Ventricular pace beats do not use the normal conduction systems in the heart used to spread the electrical signal quickly across the myocardium. So paced beats are wide and discoordinated, and that may also lead to pacing intolerance in a sick heart. The last mode you are likely to see in the CICU is DDD, with D meaning dual. The pacemaker paces both the atria and ventricle, senses both the atria and ventricle, and can pace the ventricle based on what is happening in the atrium. The pacemaker starts by listening to the atrium. It listens for a set amount of time based on the rate you have set, and either paces the atrium or inhibits itself based on what it hears. After the P wave, whether it is a paced P wave or a native one, it starts listening to the ventricle. How long it listens is set by us, here, the AV delay. If it hears a native QRS complex, it inhibits itself. If there is no native QRS, it paces. Either way, it starts the cycle over again and starts listening to the atrium. DDD pacing looks different on the monitor depending on the patient's native electrical activity. Here the patient is asensing, V pacing, due to complete heart block. The patient has normal P waves at a rate higher than the set rate, so the pacemaker is inhibiting itself. But because of the heart block, those signals are not getting to the ventricle. So the pacemaker is pacing the ventricle after the P wave at a time determined by the set AV delay. In this way, the patient is determining their own heart rate as long as it is above the rate set on the pacemaker. If the patient's own rate is slower than the set rate, the patient's could atrial pace and matricular sense and inhibit as seen here. If the patient's AV node is working well and the QRS is coming sooner than the set AV delay, it will look just like AAI in the monitor, even though the box is set DDD. But if the QRS isn't coming as fast as the set AV delay, both the atria and the ventricle will pace. And if the SA and AV nodes are working well, you'll see no indication of the pacemaker on the monitor at all.